2,000 tourism jobs are under threat because of new legislation. That's according to the Irish Self-Catering Federation. Under the new regulations being introduced on the 1st of June, self-catering units will now have to apply for specific planning permission for short-term letting. With me in studio is Peter Downey, chairperson of the Irish Self-Catering Federation. And on the line is Fine Gael TD uh, for Dun Lira, Mary, uh, Maria Bailey, who is chair of the Oireachtas Committee on Housing. Uh, thank you both indeed for joining us. Uh, P- Peter Downey, to you first of all. Um, what is the situation as it affects your members? How many uh, self-catering units do we have in the country and how will these measures effectively brought forward to, if you like, stop um, um, normally uh, or units in, of housing that are normally rented by long-term users and families and, and, and people being switching o- being switched over to the short-term letting? How many how many units are, are there going to be affected in your view? Uh, thank you, Sean, for inviting us here today. Uh, the Irish self-catering, uh, our figures, we reckon there's 8,000 properties in the country that's in the entire country uh, in self-catering um, in the city of Dublin we reckon just short of 800 yeah um, though I, I think that figure numbers. of 800 in Dublin might be disputed by other authorities but we're the experienced people that's uh, in this business on a day-to-day basis um, I object to people using a site called um, RDNA um, and extracting figures of uh, six to 7,000 uh, properties in Dublin City is yeah. totally untrue. OK, but just to summarise, and I know <clears throat> there's lots of sort of uh, terms and, and details in this, but essentially after the new arrangements come into operation, if a person intends to use a house that's not their principal private residence for short-term letting, you have to get planning permission. That'll be required. Um, but it's also saying that the new provisions will not affect normal long-term house or apartment letting, extended stay accommodation or properties availing of the revenue rent a room scheme. Okay. That, that's the essence of it, isn't it? Um, but basically what they have they have two sections of it. That is the your own personal home uh, where people are renting out um, bedroom or when they go on holidays they rent out for two weeks uh, they can um, rent out up to 90 days and that's the cap that's on that itself um, th- what we're involved in is um, where people have been in self-catering since 1950 this is not something that started in two years ago uh, when Airbnb arrived this is something that's there since 1950 where people have provided um, self-catering uh, to families coming from all over the world including um, America and you know as far as as far as it can be in the last number of years Ireland has achieved tremendous standards um, and our own federation members have won three prizes major prizes right, in Europe what is your concern so, though, our concern is that we have a department of housing here who are playing around with a proper functioning um, tourism product and have not got any technical knowledge about what they're doing on a day-to-day basis itself. And can I just add that today, I'm very, very annoyed with them. On the 9th of November last, I asked for clarity from Maria Bailey. I asked from the Minister for Housing as far back as the 9th of November. I asked him to clarify um, what his statement was that he brought out on the 25th of October about the new regulations. I was still waiting on clarification on that. I got it last night. It was better than Johnny Sexton's dropkick on the last minute. And as far as I'm concerned, Johnny, that is that'll bad. be Johnny Sexton's dropkick in Paris, I think, as opposed to anything you attempted to Absolutely. in Cardiff last week. OK, yeah. so what did they tell you? What they told us, uh, what they told me in an email is totally contradictory and it's typical of the people who have been interfering in the tourism product. What they're saying is that up to a three-bedroom house now, as far as they're concerned, outside of uh, the pressure zones does not uh, require planning permission or of change of use. Now, this is the comical part of it. So a three-bed holiday home or three-bed house, that's not your principal private residence. You don't need planning permission to rent it out. That's what they've said last night. And that's the first clarity we got in it. We go on to the next step where they have a four-bedroom house. But you cannot have any more than four people staying in that property. So the children have to stay out in the shed, out in the back, or the lean-to. Like, who's making up these laws? Who's making up so, these laws? So just to be clear about that now, because people will be find it a bit sort of one of these head-scratching things. You're saying that if you're renting out a four-bed house, no more than four people can sleep in it. That's correct, John. They put that in writing to you? They did. OK, well, I, Maria I, Bailey is I, I on the line, um, chair, as I say, of the Oireachtas uh, Housing Committee and Fine Gael TD. Can you just deal with that last point first? Could it be yeah, for good real? Good morning, Sean, and good morning, Peter. Good morning, and I know I've, I've met Peter a couple of times, and I've spoken to you a couple of times on the phone, and we've exchanged emails we, a number we met, of times, We met Peter. once, Maria. 
That's what I said. We met. And I've spoken to you a couple of times. We've exchanged emails. And I know that you had a meeting with uh, the department as well. But you just didn't mention that there. I haven't seen the email that Peter has in front of him. But what I, what I want to clarify is, is that short-term lettings do fulfil a very valuable role in meeting a particular accommodation demand in this country. And we are not trying to undermine that in any shape or form. What we are trying to do is there is a particular pinch point in Dublin in the rental market. And what we know by that is that, and we can argue figures, but they're there or thereabouts, there's about 3,500 entire homes or apartments in the Dublin area that are on short-term lettings or on a platform of a kind, right? What we know is the amount of people, families that we have in hotels in emergency situations, and yet we have families, tourism, um, people coming here and availing of our rich culture in our homes. So this is not... What we're trying to be really clear on here is so anybody who is operating a short-term letting or a self-catering premises, as a general rule of thumb, if they're an existing property and they are in compliance already with the planning code or they are relying on the pre-existing planning exemption that provisions that they have, then they are not impacted by these proposals. These proposals, and I'm glad Peter said, that the majority of the self-catering properties are outside the Dublin area. So what we're trying to focus on here is there is a, a pinch point in the rental market and we're trying to regularise that. Now, that doesn't come without complications, and I fully accept that. And that's why it's taken so long to, to get to this point. Legislation for, uh, is due to come back to the committee shortly on this, where we will scrutinise it again and we'll go through a committee stage. And there's been numerous stakeholders involved, either physically or by sending in submissions into the, the report of the Oireachtas Committee. And can you get and all what, done? Can you get get that all done and through the house in time for this 1st of June, June the 1st deadline? Well, that's up to the houses. I can't preempt that, but the timeline Maria, would allow for that. Mar- Mar- but Maria, look- I have to come in here, Maria. You know, it's, it's, you're saying lovely sentences and putting lovely things out there. The fact is that we're two months away from the deadline that uh, Minister O. Murphy set out last year. On the 9th of November, I wrote to yourself and I wrote to his department. I had no answers back whatsoever. But yet, at the last minute last night, I, I received an email. I, I know, you, you're making that point. But well, well it's, just, this, be, this just is, be very this is clear not... here, Sean. I'm not a minister, so just be very clear here, right? So uh, what I'm, I have engaged with Peter on a number of occasions, as I have with other stakeholders. But what I'm saying is this comes before the House of the Oireachtas. This was cross-party um, support for this. But I need to be very clear and reassure people here, anybody who is operating an existing self-catering property that is relying on pre-existing planning exemptions or has planning permission or they're in operation more than seven years, they are not affected by this. And I need to be very clear on this. Where did you hear that, uh, Maria? That's in the legislation that is coming before us, Peter. Well, it's, it's funny, Maria, it's, uh, and I'm, I'm, I don't like jumping in on conversations with people itself, but I have to tell the facts here, and I'm telling the truth. I've engaged... Well, I, 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 sorry, I, I didn't interfere with your not. conversation. I didn't. I didn't interfere. And I appreciate now if you do the same with me, Maria, for, for one moment, please. You did just say you were interrupting so, her, but go on anyway. OK, Maria... Maria um, Eighteen months to two years ago, uh, when this whole um, scenario showed its head, um, we, the self catering Federation of Ireland, applied uh, to uh, be on that committee or be a witness of that committee. We were told, no, we cannot. It was set out purely um, for planning applications and it did not consider people who are operating in tourism since 1950. OK, but just can I ask you about your, your statement, uh, Peter Downey, where you suggest that they, this could cost up to 2,000 jobs. Now, what's your basis for saying that? Our, our basis is um, up to yesterday. Um, we, we did estimations um, on the number and we've sat down and we've clearly looked at all the platforms and we know ourselves through our own members uh, what bookings are actually coming in itself. We estimated that it was up to 2,000 jobs to be lost um, in the self-catering federation, in the self-catering business, if the current laws, as they stood, up to what we were told yesterday, stood in place. OK, it's, it's a huge loss to the exchequer and a massive dent in the Irish tourism industry. It's that because self-catering has become such a good product itself. But it, we're People only talking are. about the difficulty, surely, in the, the rent pressure zones. Um, unfortunately, um, this is not what came out. In my opinion, the minister 
uh, made a statement on the 25th of October without knowing fully the facts that 80% of people who were involved in self-catering had not got the commercial plan and he was talking about. Holiday home villages had to have it and group schemes had to have it. But individuals... So, so a, lo- a lot of your individual members, they now have to go and get for, look for planning permission. But, but Absolutely. Sean, Sean, can I just be very, very clear here? And I, I'm not arguing with Peter. I'm, I'm like... They play a huge role in tourism in this country. Nobody is questioning that in any shape or form. What this is about is regularising a planning system. So anybody who is under those planning guidelines or uh, their exempted provisions that were there or are operating over seven years will not be affected by this. This is, we have a problem in our rental market that we are trying to regularise and it won't be perfect, but this is still open to conversations and interaction. We had the Minister in on this um, a couple of weeks ago. We had the Department of Fishes in a couple of weeks ago. There's ongoing engagements here, whereas members were looking for clarity around situations, depending on which part of the country you're in. Um, yeah. we, uh, there is ongoing you, you, consultation here. This is not finalised. Yeah, but it's, it's like it's coming it's, very close to the, the deadline for its introduction uh, and the law hasn't uh, been published yet. Look, uh, l- last thing on this one, Peter Jordan, or sorry, Peter Downey, uh, you had a roadshow. What kind of concerns did your members yeah, express? We, we were so concerned about the, um, the non-action shown and engagement. There was no engagement, no conference, no listen to what we, ha- we were offering to the government. None whatsoever. We were told well, what I to do. Um, Maria, I know you listen to us, but why am I still feeling this way uh, since November the 1st? Nothing's happened for us. Um, we had a road show which sat in Castlebar. We stopped all the way down to Bantry and all the way across Ireland to meet people because people all over the country don't know what is happening after the 1st of June itself. Still did not know. We're entitled. We, we want to... We want to have a proper, structured self-catering business in Ireland. We're there, the Federation is there to help yeah. anybody who wants to do it itself. We feel the planning was not necessary for what you're actually okay, talking about. OK, Maria Bailey, it's not too late to have a, a, a decent consultation, I think is what Peter Downey and the Self-Catering Federation is looking for. Yeah, but uh, Peter didn't say there that he was in with the department there last week or the week before last. He I got no news. That in his consultation. No, but, sorry, but you, you did meet with them, Peter. Be fair now, you did meet with no, them. No, no, I, don't I, know I, what I met, I met with the man. Right? I met the, so, with the man. Yeah, and, sorry, there was two was people talking? there at that meeting. There was myself and another you, person. Peter. OK, well, look, I'm going to interrupt so, you both because Sean, we have to leave it there. Very briefly, Maria Bailey. I need to be really clear. Peter mentioned proper structure has to be put in place. That's what we're trying to do in consultation with people. This has not been rushed through. People will not be affected if they, as I said, if they're operating under the current guidelines or in the last seven years. This is a mechanism to regulate the planning system and not anything else. Okay, Maria, all I can say is that we have had no helpful engagement from the time we started with this and the Federation has, has an open door and an invitation okay. to anybody to sit down That's with us. Right. We That's leave it why. there and hopefully you'll get together and sort out the differences there in a very important uh, dimension or element of the tourism industry. My thanks to you, Peter Downey, Chairperson of the Irish Self-Catering Federation for coming to studio and from, to, to Maria Bailey, Finnegal LTD and Chair of the Housing Committee for taking our call.